ESPN 1080 The Team presents the ESPN 1080.com Insider Show, delivering you the latest news and notes from around the sports world. We got all your local teams covered, including the Knights, the Magic, Howard soaring high above the rim, the Rays, a walk-off home run, the Bucks, Bavarola, Raymond Rays, touchdown, and the Knolls. The Insiders are your ticket into the press box. And now, here's your insider. ESPN 1080 here in Orlando on a soggy Sunday morning. Eric Lopez here alongside Andrew Melnick, who I get to finally see back in a couple weeks. Still locked out, NBA insider, but uh, Andrew, it's a soggy Sunday. Yeah, it's terrible out here. <laughs> it's, yeah. Also joined by Carson Engel. Uh, it was still soggy from last night's uh, college football UCF game against Marshall. Yeah, I'm pretty much just uh, that was a that was a blip on the radar there. I don't even know what to uh, what to say about that, but we'll get into it a little bit. Absolutely, got Buckman, our producer. Uh, Buckman, we we were. Uh, I, let's just let's be honest. We're the two best UCF fans, right, Buckman? For sure, man. I mean, the only reason why we won is because we were back in the stadium. Absolutely. Well said. The people's running back here. He was dry the whole time. You were dry, weren't you today? Yeah, exactly. There you go. We got an interesting show coming up on the show. We will tell you what the heck has gone wrong to the big three in college football in the Sunshine State. They stink. That's an understatement. It started out so promising, but just went up in flames. We'll t- we'll tell you why. Can it be uh, restored? We'll fi- we'll tell you later. MLB playoffs. All ten of you watching it. We'll let we'll break it down for you. And, of course, NFL Picks, a debut segment that Buckman has created. We're fired up about it. That'll be in the final segment. He gets to pick six random games for us, right? Yeah, teasing segment one. Stick around for the last one. So, uh, wow. you know, it should be fun. So you can find us on ESPN Insiders on Facebook, on Twitter. We are all over the map on YouTube. It's a beautiful thing, ladies and gentlemen. But let's get right to it. Top story last night at Bright House Network Stadium. The UCF Knights in a downpour rain in front of many dozens and dozens of the diehards of black and gold. Salute you, folks. You're the real UCF fan, so much props to you if you went out to the attendance there, all 10,000 of you. Uh, UCF wins it 16-6 to over Marshall. They win the seventh in a row. Carson, your thoughts on the game? Uh, you know, it, it was uh, it was an ugly game, and, and you kind of expected, regardless of how, the, how it played out, that... Uh, that was going to be the kind of game that it was. And obviously, Brent Harvey, I think, is the positive that you take out of the game. He had 180 yards rushing at a big 50-yard run as well for a touchdown. Um, so so there's, there, I think you know, the, the Knights did some different things yesterday, and that, and that sort of switched things up. But we really didn't get to see too many of their changes just because of the conditions and the way that that kind of shaped how the game was played. Sometimes simplifying your plan is the best change you can make. Yeah. And I think they certainly did that, you know, uh, going back to a, a main running back instead of doing the sort of three-headed circus that they've been doing in the backfield all year long. Uh, they went to Bryn Harvey there. He's the kind of guy that gets, uh, gets better as the, as the game goes on, as the game wears on, and, and uh, he had a very nice performance there in the slop. You Bryn Harvey getting the start, going, uh, getting the load. No more three-back system. We talked about this, Carson, two weeks ago. They had to make a decision. looks like they did with this game, at least, with Bryn Harvey. But it, it was smart. They they did a bunch of different things on offense. Uh, you know, one, one certainly being that they went with Bryn Harvey. He became sort of the main guy uh, carrying the load. And then also they really changed up the receiver rotation. Of course, Quincy McDuffie was out with an injury, but they gave more time to the young guys. And, and Josh Reese ended up being uh, the leading receiver on the night. And I think that's a very good step for UCF, giving the ball more to Josh Reese and J.J. Wharton. And even though they didn't, they weren't able to throw it too much, uh, they did get it to those young guys uh, fairly often. Yeah, it's good to see Josh Reese finally get involved. He's one of the higher recruited players they've ever signed at UCF. Offensive line did a very good job. Really uh, took it to Marshall's defensive line, who's one of the top defensive lines. Had a good year. Vinny Curry's going to be in the NFL next year. Offensive line did a good job hoping up some holes early. They really took control early. I mean, anywhere you look at it, Marshall had a terrible game. I mean, every every statistic was just absolutely blown out in favor of the Knights. I think it was like double the time of possession. Uh, they got 40 minutes. Uh, they got only a, they got under 20 minutes time of possession to UCF's 40 total yards. I think they only got like 
150, 180 total yards, something like that. I mean, Marshall just looked absolutely terrible, and they looked completely lost in the rain, as did their young quarterback, Cato, the freshman. Uh, he did not have a good outing on the night. 130 total yards for Marshall. That's, that's fantastic, rain or not. <laughs> yeah, the UCF defense continues to roll as uh, they get a, a conference home opener win over Marshall. Marshall and UCF now beat them seven straight times. We mentioned the attendance a little low. Announced crowd actually of 24,000, but anyway, everybody that was there would acknowledge it was a little lower. Yeah, that was certainly the ticket sold before the game, but all those people <laughs> did not show up to Bright House Network Stadium. Uh, it was one of the smallest crowds yeah. that I've seen in most places, and I think you, know, you just kind of... Uh, Attribute that to the conditions and the weather, and and it's understandable, uh, certainly. But uh, you know, it was just one of those weird days where everyone knew, hey, it's going to downpour. It kept coming. And it's not. It's unusual for Florida, but it rained all day and kept right through through the fun. game. I enjoyed it actually. I enjoy a little weather from time to time, a little sloppiness, little adds a little drama to the game. The best part for me that I enjoyed. Nobody was tailgating, so it made it easier to park. So I actually hope it happens like this the rest of the year. Get rid of everybody from tailgating. That's my new policy. I don't think you're going to make a lot of friends with that kind. I know I won't, but I don't care. It's all about me. I don't really care about everybody else, to be honest, Andrew. I'm just going to be confessing. In fact, I have this new policy. I know I'm really going to be hated for this, but oh, I don't boy. care. Uh-oh. I think people on campus, unless you have a ticket to the game, should not be allowed to tailgate. How about that? I don't mind that, actually. I'm kind of for that. Because I actually am tired of people that tailgate there and don't go to the game. I like that. I like that, actually. It's going to keep happening. <laughs> oh, I know, but it's annoying just because of a park. I mean, Carson, you know this. You've driven in there. It's annoying to park, uh, to drive in there. That's why I don't park on campus. Yeah, right. I can't it's ridiculous. Do it. And last night it was great. Nobody was around. It was nice and peaceful after the game. Just a little stroll to the walk, to the, back to the lot. No, pr- no traffic. It's to hang out with Buckman and Winnegar. Go out and uh, have a good time. Huh? Didn't we, Buckman? Had a good time after the game, wasn't it? I had a great time. Oh, man. That I, was I, one of the best I times I can hang ever, out with man. you guys. Kohler. Yeah, that was a good time. That was fun. We won't go into details. That's an insider exclusive. But uh, let's just say uh, Andrea was a very good winner. You got to pay for that one. Yeah, you got a subscription for that. All right, so UCF gets the win 16-6. to They now will go to SMU. The challenge goes up a little higher in a rematch of the Conference USA title game a year ago. They go to Dallas against the Mustangs, and June Jones are rolling. New quarterback, but uh, still positive results. Yeah. Real Kyle, tough game. Kyle Padron, fantastic season last year. Maybe yeah. some accuracy issues. Boom, he's just out in the first game, benched after, what, two early interceptions against Texas A&M. And McDermott's done the job. He's, he's been awesome. They beat TCU last week, won the, uh, the Golden Skillet. Is that what it's called, I believe? I'm going to go with that. Yeah, that's a, are we getting a thumbs up from the people's No, that's a thumbs down from the people's running back. Ain't accurate there? Do you know the award? The Iron Skillet, excuse me, I got it. The oh, Iron there skillet. you go. You will be correct, Miss Amon. That's why he's here. He's our, he's our corrector guy. You know. They they won the Iron Skillet. Uh, played really well. First time they've beaten TCU since '05, I yeah. believe. And really, if things didn't snowball in that A and M game, I think they could have given them a game. It, it's going to be tough to go to Dallas and get a win. Very difficult game. I don't know what to think yet. Obviously, UCF did change up a lot of things in this Marshall game, and that seemed to work. But SMU is, th- I think, in a whole other uh, stratosphere to uh, what Marshall is at right now, and. And I expect that to be just a really difficult game. And, and right now, I think if you had to pin me down on it, I, I don't like UCF's chances in that game. Well, their offense has got to definitely get to be a little better. It's not uh, very explosive right now. Quincy McDuffie was out with a nagging injury last night. Uh, they just don't have right now the playmakers in the, in the perimeter of the wideouts. Brent Harvey was solid. He has to be run the football. But you're going to have to score points against SMU. I know UCF's played great defensively. They held SMU to seven last year. But this one's going to be in Dallas. I know SMU has circled that game. Uh, it, it's going to be a very interesting challenge, 3.30 next week. Yeah, and uh, while UCF was getting banged up in the rain, SMU had a bye. Oh, by the way, they get to watch it live, beautifully in their homes. So that's going to be an interesting game. It's going to be an interesting challenge for them. Uh, the Knights, I think, have to raise their level right now because Houston right now is playing at a different level. They destroyed East Carolina, which is good news for UCF because uh, now UCF's kind of in control of the East for now. But, uh, man, Houston, Case Keenum already over 2,300 yards. Uh, (laughs) Really should get consideration for the Heisman Trophy. I have him fifth on my list, but uh, it's amazing what one guy can do, and he has definitely brought Houston back. Well, they, uh, you know, I I think that they're going to be, they're going to obviously be the class of the conference, and and really, I mean, you can't really see them losing another game in CUSA. 
uh, throughout the year. Is there? I mean, is there a game well, on the schedule? Tulsa. They go to Tulsa at the end of the year. That'll be yeah. tough. They host SMU at the end of the year. They should be ten and zero going into the SMU home game. They have SMU and at Tulsa to finish the year, but they they should be ten and zero and ranked pretty high uh, at that point. And if they can go undefeated, they could be that sleeper team that kind of sneaks into that BCS because they could get into that top fifteen. They have to probably have a Boise loss. Yeah. Yeah. For that to work out. And that's I, fair. That doesn't look like that's going to happen No, either. they're pretty knows, good, too. Who knows? Happened last year, so we'll, we'll have to see on that. Houston, I like what they did yesterday because I think I said on the, the website the other day, they hadn't really been impressive lately. They still haven't beaten the team with a winning record, but we know East Carolina is better than their record indicates, and they destroyed them. Well, the thing that impressed me about that is they held East Carolina to three points. That's the alarming stat. Houston's defense rising to the occasion. And this is a week after giving up a 40-something to UTEP. Yeah. They did a nice job, Kevin Sumlin did there. And so that's a good win for Houston. But again, UCF defensively best in the conference. Really, he should have pitched a shutout yesterday. The offense keeps giving up points. <laughs> that's uh, that's kind of how that works. Uh, Blake Bortles, a good two snaps. Yeah, that, that was kind of, uh, I think that the whole Will Bortles play, he's going to get time, was kind of obviously overplayed this week because we really didn't see him very much at well, all. I think the weather, I think the weather clearly yeah. played a big factor in that. I think they realized this was not a game you're going to chuck it 20 times a game. So Bortles really was not going to be a real big factor uh, in the rain. Are the fans still calling for for Jeff Godfrey's head? Do you guys in attendance? I think there's some there are. I'm not one of them. I think you'll be all right. Uh, you're going to go as far as Godfrey takes it. In Godfrey, you got to trust. Yeah, Carson would know. He has the shot. I, I do. Yeah. I I trust. So it's a good win, an ugly win for UCF, but they win 16-6. to uh, They get off the schneid, which not too many in the state could say, which we'll get into in the next segment. Uh, boy, that's not going to be pretty there, Andrew. I know it's not going to. We're not looking forward to that. Uh, what what games in the state? I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Denial. That's good. That's the stage he's at right now. There are a lot of people in the state in denial. Who's in bigger trouble? Gators, Canes, Knowles. Oh, jeez. We are going to break it down next here as you're listening to the ESPN1080.com Insider Show on ESPN 1080, the team. It's the leaderboard, Monday, 6 to 8 on ESPN 1080, WHOO. This is where the pros come to talk. Hi, this is Boo Weekly. Hi, this is Jim Fuhrer. Hi, this is Rocco Mediate. Hi, this is Trevor Immelman. Hi, this is Zach Johnson. Hi, this is Woody Austin. Where the pros come to talk about their game, live from Celebration Town Tavern. Hi, this is Corey Pavin, the 2010 Ryder Cup captain. Listen to the leaderboard, Monday evenings, 6 to 8 p.m., right here on ESPN. Hey Gators fan, fall isn't just college football season, it's Eckridge season. Think you know your orange and blue well enough to win some game day tickets to see the Gators? Listen to Tuck and O'Neill for the Eckridge Make the Moment Rich Trivia Question. Brought to you by Eckridge Smoked Sausage for your chance to qualify for tickets to the Florida Georgia game. Along with a $50 Winn-Dixie gift card for your next Gators tailgate party. Stock up on Eckridge Smoked Sausage at your neighborhood Winn-Dixie. And listen to Tuck and O'Neill daily for your chance to win. It's Eckridge season, make the moment rich. I'm Lori, and I'm going to Walgreens to avoid a repeat of last year when my daughter caught a cold. Mom, take it too! And spread it to the whole family. Mom, tissues, please! Honey, more orange juice! At Walgreens, I can find answers, like Clorox disinfecting wipes, which kill 99.9% .9 of germs and help stop the spread of cold and flu viruses. Now, two 35-count canisters of Clorox disinfecting wipes are just $4 with in-store coupon. Walgreens, there's a way to stay well. Use as directed. ESPN1080.com Insider Show here on ESPN1080 The Team Orlando on a soggy day here. Eric Lopez alongside Andrew Melnick, your magic insider lockout. Looks like we're going to be canceling a couple weeks of regular season tomorrow there, Andrew. Yeah, canceling two Magic Heat games, actually. I'm sure everyone's disappointed oh. about that. Oh. I have a feeling they'll make it up later in the year. Yeah. They're not gonna. They're not gonna get away without playing. I know that. you're devastated. We're missing that Charlotte Bobcats home opener. Yeah, terrible news. Um, actually, speaking of the Magic Heat, last time we had a lockout uh, to to warm up in the preseason, they wound up just playing a home and home. Probably will happen again this year whenever the season starts. Agreed. So we hope that happens. Carson Engel joining us as well. Buckman, our producer there. Buckman, where can they find us on uh, all over social media? Yeah, man. You find us on Twitter. ESP. Uh, it's Insiders 1080. Find us there. You find us on Facebook. We got a like page. Search. Uh, 
10, ESPN 1080 Insiders, and uh, that's all run by the Insiders. So it's a beautiful it's straight, thing. Straight from the source. Don't plus, get any better than plus that. Plus, you go to YouTube, you can find all of the archive shows we've had on this uh, program there. People's running back, uploading shows left and right. Well, boys, as bad as the weather is outside, it's probably a good, uh, pretty good way to compare to football and right now in the Sunshine State in college, guys. Uh, FSU in Florida, Miami all losing yesterday for the first time since 2004, October 30th. It's the second time it's happened in over 30 years. Uh, Andrew, we'll start with you. We'll go in chronological order. Florida State goes to Winston-Salem and just gives up 35 points again to Wake Forest. What is going on with the defense? And then the other big question is, E.J. Manuel all week expected to play. They start Clint Trickett. He has three turnovers. Manuel comes in. What's going on there as well? Well, I think like all of us did, we didn't think Florida State was going to have much of a problem in this game, and I think they could get. They thought they could get away with playing Clint Trickett another game and beat Wake Forest. You know, behind a, a defense, behind him, making a couple plays because he played well against Clemson, but man, he was awful in this game. He was off all day. EJ came in, had a nice first drive, and then he was kind of off for most of the game too. Threw a couple really high passes, a couple interceptions. Uh, you know, they, they, this is a team. There's no, there's no excuses. There's no injury excuse or anything like that. But again, this Florida State probably outplayed Wake Forest. Definitely has a, a more talented team. Had ten penalties and turned the ball over five times. It looks like they cleaned nothing up during the bye week. Got worse. I have five turnovers. I, when you have ten penalties and five turnovers, I mean, it's, it's, it's to tough to beat anybody. It's hard to believe this was the same team that was right there tied 13-13 with the Oklahoma in the fourth quarter about less than a month ago. Uh, and watching Oklahoma the last few weeks, it, maybe they were just toying with Florida State. I really don't know how else to explain it. How do we? Fi- how is this fixable? Is it salvageable? It, not really, because, I mean, the only hope was to, to win the conference. That's yeah, completely that's out the yeah, window now. Gone. It's probably out the window with the Clemson loss, but, you know, maybe not with Taj Boyd getting banged up. Maybe they could have dropped a game or two, but that doesn't matter now. It's pretty much too late for that. I guess if, if you can string together some wins, beat Miami and Florida again, who have looked about as bad as Florida yeah. State, then maybe it's, it's a slightly salvage season, but... Things aren't going well, and I think if things continue like this, I mean, Jimbo Fisher so far eight and seven against BCS teams, six and five in the conference. That's just not going to cut it. Oh, wow! <laughs> I'm, I'm not Whoa. saying he's on Melnick, the hot seat. Vicious, vicious I'm, not saying, alum. I'm not saying he's on the hot seat or Melnick anything. Just put him on the hot seat. I, I, I will. Maybe, maybe, maybe we should. Wow! Two and two and three start. Uh, you know, everyone uh, ten wins was great last year, but they had four losses. Lost to some teams they had no business losing to. And you know, if this trend continues, you know Ron Zook had similar records and didn't make it Ooh. out of season three. Look at this Ooh. guy, man! He's calling the boosters after the show. He's he's getting Jimbo out of Tallahassee. Well, look, I, I'm not ready to fire anyone right now, but two and three, uh, some changes need to happen. Whether it's him breaking or not. news here, Andrew Melnick putting Jimbo Fisher on the spot. On the spot, not quite on the hot seat yet. It's only it's only the beginning of year two, but there's trouble. Well, let me ask you about the defense, because we thought this defense was going to be pretty good. And Clemson, they gave up a lot of points, but hey, Clemson's got a good offense. Wake Forest has not, does not have a good offense. I know turnovers played a role in it. 35 points. Mark Stoops, we blew Mickey Harrison, uh, Mickey Harrison, Mickey Andrews out of town because this defense couldn't stop anybody his last year. Right now, this defense can't stop anybody. What, what's gone wrong there, and is it fixable? Uh, it should be fixable, because they should have the talent to, to fix things. But so far, it's been, it hasn't been good. I mean, the secondary which is supposed to be one of the strengths of the team, has been falling apart. Uh, the, the corners haven't played up to their potential. Terrence Parks hasn't played well. The only real good guy who's been consistently good at all, and even he's given up a couple of plays, is LaMarcus Joyner. Uh, the linebackers have been a disappointment. And defensive line has been pretty good. I mean, Bjorn Warner has been the best player on the team through, through the first few games here. But it hasn't been as good as it probably should be. Uh, I mean, they, they need to wake up here because this is, this is an ugly loss, and... You know, I didn't put Jimbo on the hot seat, but if this continues, everybody else is going to. <laughs> wow, that's strong. Well, as bad as things are... Are... Wake Forest losses got the last staff thrown out of a job. Yes, it did. Jeff Bowden in particular, yeah, we've had bad memories. In fact, he was Wake... fired the day after a Wake Forest loss. Oh, uh, that when we got shut or resigned. Out of, we got shut me. out in Tallahassee. That was. Uh, were you there for that game? I uh, yes. What year it was, was it that uh, Wake Forest won the ACC? Uh, uh, Two thousand six, I believe. We call that the dark days in the yes. ACC. It got the bit, it got it got Louisville a BCS win. Yes, it did. Uh, Carson, the Gators, not yes, much sir. happiness in Gainesville. They no. were chanting in Baton Rouge. It blanks to be a Gator, and it's not good. It's the stinks to be a Gator. And uh, 
Boy, they just got steamrolled by Well, LSU. yeah, I, I don't think we anyone really thought they had any shot going into this game against LSU, but just how badly they played, I think, is, is something to take note. I mean, they really just couldn't sustain drives all game long. They were 2 of 11 on third down, and then basically... I guess the Jeff Driscoll era is over in Gainesville before it even basically started. As <laughs> well, you got, he, was, he was hurt. As you've got Jacoby got Brissett, uh, you know, you know, at quarterback there, and 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 uh, what's it? And uh, Driscoll didn't even take a snap. Driscoll was hurt though. Didn't dress. Didn't yeah, dress the, he didn't dress for the game. Right. Though they kind of kept that hidden all week. Uh, right. This guy Jacoby Brissett though. This was when Charlie Weiss got there. They had Driscoll in the phone. This, this is a guy he went hard after. Brissett, yeah. This is a guy they like a lot. Um, you know, they're going to have to get both these kids, I guess, as much time as they can. But then they started reverting to things from last year, throwing Trey Burton in with yeah. those running backs. Yeah. It was like they were trying anything they could. And I don't know if this is necessarily, you know, a completely bash Florida for a game like this. I, I think it's more just LSU is that good. Yeah, no, LSU is very good. Uh, but I said this last week, though, Andrew. He brought it up. I don't think Driscoll fits the system. I think you're right. I think Jacoby Brissett probably has a, more of the future for Florida. And I think that's the really, if you're Florida, this is what your season's about now. Who's going to be your quarterback next year? I, I, and, and if and you, you heard, mentioned this, Andrew, last week. If you heard Charlie Weiss, uh, he pretty much has been saying the reason Driscoll is in, the reason Driscoll plays, because Driscoll was there in the spring. Jacoby Brissett was not. He didn't enroll till the fall. You guys want to start a rumor? Sure, why not? Let's do it. Driscoll to UCF. Let's start it. Let's start it right They're now. Gonna get all can, the, uh, are you, are you, can you break the music? Are you going to break this? Is this like a developing situation here? David Blackman reporting rumors of Jeff Driscoll transferring to UCF already. Abru- complete, complete. I have no sources. No sources. No sources. Well, uh, you know, just, just wishful thinking. Maybe I don't. They know. have one. OV. We got Jimbo Fisher on they the have hot one quarter- seat. Jeff Driscoll going to UCF. They have one quarterback Four. from Oviedo. Why not two? I never understood. That's, 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 our, that's, that's where we're coming from on that. Wow. From the UCF Melody. press box, you could see the very field where Driscoll played his high school football. So you're kicking Blake Bortles to the no, curb? No, no, I'm not kicking anybody to the curb. I'm just, I, with open arms, I, I, I accept. And Godfrey, he doesn't trust. No, I, I, I trust Godfrey, but <laughs> there's going to be a, you know, a year where we're going to need another quarterback. Why not Driscoll? He, wow. I mean, he was the number one recruit. I don't know if we should uh, quarterback recruit. I don't know if we should write off his Florida career quite yet. Why not? Let's just have fun with it. <laughs> Start a rumor. Let's just do it. Everyone oh, else man. does it. All right. Well, so Florida, of course, will play Auburn now in uh, Jordan Air. That's who wasn't good yesterday. They played a very good Arkansas team, and it's not a bad Auburn team. I think a little better than, than all thought. of us thought. Yeah, Chiswick's done a nice job there, and uh, at least it'll get easier for Florida because it can't get any harder because I agree. LSU's spectacular. Right now, Andrew, LSU or Alabama, who you got? Jeez, oh, I, I, I like Alabama because I think they have a little more of ability to score, although Spencer Ware was, was fantastic for LSU. I think the difference for me, I actually think LSU's defense might be a slight Slight, slight, slight notch at Alabama, but they don't have a Trent Richardson. That's that's the difference for me. Why I'd probably probably put Alabama slightly, but and the games in Alabama this year, that does help. Which defense you like better, LSU, Alabama, or the Dolphins? Well, I certainly am not taking the Dolphins. Yeah, for they're that. probably third. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they're definitely they're definitely behind those two. Uh, 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 it's been rough going there down in Miami, as we yes, all know. Suck for luck. Yes, that's what we're rooting for. It doesn't get it much better in mind. Coral Gables either. The Hurricanes lose a shootout to Virginia Tech. Logan Thomas wakes up, and Vatek beats Miami again oh, in a wild one, 38-35. You get the running game going. Ja'Cory Harris has probably one of the more efficient, better games of his career, and you lost. Yep, and you're 2-3 and three as well. Three losses within the last minute. I think that uh, I think that Al Golden needs to drop the whole uh, shirt and tie look. I think that's what's that's what's holding him back. Almost broke down in tears post game. I'm not a fan Already. of the shirt and the tie. Taking a pl- page out of Urban Meyer I, first I year <laughs> worked for him. I guess <laughs> <laughs> the same time frame too. Because didn't he do it? He did it after the LSU game. Yes, that's so, what I said. It was right in the same time frame. Uh, Miami. I, I Although don't think you can be completely upset if you're them today. Well, you're you played pretty defense. well. Yeah, yeah. Offensively, you got to be placed defensively. You did. I mean, you yeah. lost Marcus Sportson yeah. for the season. That's a huge blow. Uh, you're still missing uh, Olive Vernon. You did get Ray Ray Armstrong back, but th- there's a huge, that's a huge blow, losing Sportson, your best defensive lineman. But they, they fought hard. I mean, they had a nice comeback. That I, I thought it was over when Jared Boykin got the long pass to put them back up 10 in the fourth quarter, but Lamar Miller is just Fred, fantastic. Might be the best player in the, the state. Yeah, I'd, I'd have trouble. Arg- I'd have trouble arguing that one. Yeah, tremendous talent, but Miami finds a way to lose in the last minute. That's been their issue so far. 
And Logan Thomas has been terrible, and yeah. he torched them. And they got torched. So the question is, of the big three, who can sell? Uh, I mean, who's going to end up being the better team at the end of the year here? Who can turn this around? I'm not sure who's the best team, but as for who can salvage their season, Florida hasn't played Georgia or South Carolina. They already beat Tennessee, so they'd be in the best shape to still win their division. Right, the control. You got to play. South I don't know. Carolina. I don't think they're the best team of the three, but they they have the best chance at salvaging making the season into something. Yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, I just don't think we know. I think I think all three teams are pretty equal in terms of talent at this point because they all they all recruit similarly. They're all kind of in a similar spot in their programs, and and so I think they're all they're all pretty equal right now. Ugly though. Yeah, yeah they are. Equal, equally but, ugly. How about yeah. these stats? Miami defense gave up thirty, gave up thirty eight to Vatek. FSU gives up thirty five to Wake. Florida gives up forty one to LSU. I know it wasn't all defensively. There were some special teams and et cetera. But I mean, well, there wasn't special teams. There should have been in the LSU game. Should have been right. Yeah, it was a ridiculous call. What happened to defense in these big three? That's what carried these programs a long time ago. Here, guys, isn't uh, that the biggest problem here? With, with Florida, their offense has just been so brutally bad. I, I don't think their defense stands much of a chance. Uh, Miami, they've had guys out. They they had some struggles at times last year. I mean, I think the real big thing is that Florida State doesn't look like they've gotten any better from last year defensively. Steps backwards, if anything. Yeah, from that Oklahoma game, certainly huge steps backwards. Unbelievable. So Florida State will go to Duke next week. In Durham, we can hear it right here on ESPN 1080. Got Florida going to Auburn and among others there. Ohio State lose to Nebraska last night as well. I'm going to start off a rumor here. How about this? Urban Meyer going to Ohio State. Book it. I don't know if you started that one. <laughs> no. Yeah, that's... I'll just keep going with it. It's not as good as yours. You Carry the torch. Fisher, but... All right, so that was well, That's a... opinion, not rumor. Yes. That's true. So we're going to take a break. When we come back, a little MLB playoffs. Yo, yes, it is still going on. It did not end on Thursday or Friday, as many thought, with Philly and the Yankees gone. There is still four teams playing. We will tell you who they are and where you can find it. That's next. <laughs> Here on ESPN 1080, the team. Want to get away but don't have a lot of time and don't want to spend a lot of money? You can't beat our staycation packages. Some of the best hotels and resorts in Florida at half price. Half price. This radio station has secured these incredible half price deals at some of the most desirable locations, from the beaches to the Orlando theme parks. Now you can't afford that getaway you want and need. Book your half price staycation. Log on to ESPN1080.com. ESPN1080.com. ESPN1080, the team now has the only local NASCAR show in Central Florida. Join racing enthusiast Stu Smith and veteran sports broadcaster Tracy Dent for Track Time every Friday from 6 to 7 p.m. Brought to you by Orlando Dodge Chrysler Jeep. The show features driver interviews, current rules discussions, the past week's racing happenings, and the coming weekend starting positions. Join Stu and Tracy for Track Time every Friday, 6 to 7 p.m. Sponsored by Orlando Dodge Chrysler Jeep. Every time I feel my baby kick, I sing. You don't understand. I never sing. I'm not good at singing. I'm the only person I know has been booed off a karaoke stage. But that was before I was pregnant. Today, I'm a singer with a captive audience of one. She doesn't boo me. She never will. We know how it feels. We're the March of Dimes. Find out how we can help you have a healthier baby at marchofdimesbaby.org. ESPN1080.com Insider Show here on ESPN 1080 The Team. Eric Lopez alongside Andrew Melnick, Carson Engel, David Buckman in controls with the people's running back Victor Anderson on board. Uh, here on a soggy Sunday here in Orlando. MLB playoffs, the uh, ALCS got underway last night. For those who are wondering who played, it was the Texas Rangers and the Detroit Tigers. They ended at 1 a.m. last night after a rain delay of themselves. Two the rain delays. Two rain delays over an hour with the Rangers beating the Tigers 3-2, to two, and uh, Game 2 is tonight. Game 1, Cardinals Brewers are going to play at 4 o'clock today. Uh, not the matchups people were expecting. No Philadelphia, no Boston, no New York. No major markets. All middle, all central, all time. Yeah, that's a little trouble. I mean, when you don't have Boston and New York lately, the ratings certainly do suffer. As sick of everyone gets them, they still watch them. Uh, but we've got some good teams. I mean, I don't think anyone should be shocked that no. it's Detroit and Texas at all. I think maybe the Phillies going down is a pretty big surprise. But, yeah. you know, we knew that lineup had issues. Yeah. And Ryan Howard has issues in October. 
<laughs> now he's got even been. Now he's going to have issues for a ACL. long time. Uh, let's start in the American League. Obviously, Detroit. I mean, I don't think we're shocked. I think most people, I think, inside would have picked Detroit and Texas. The, the Yankees. The funny thing is, I think the, almost all of us did pick Detroit and yeah, Texas. Actually. But the funny thing is, not the way we thought. The Yankees, we thought pitching would be the issue, but they actually got pretty good pitching, especially in Game Five. They just couldn't hit and clutch. And uh, Alex Rodriguez, well, just did what Alex Rodriguez yeah, does best. Yeah, Mark Deshera didn't hit. Derek let's didn't let's hit get as another well as one good. going because we're just on this whole uh, rumor geez. deal, and, and you and me yeah, we both came are, up with yeah, this. This, this, is is co, uh, this is co. This is co. Andrew, why don't you us. think on this? I'm, I'm Alex listening. Rodriguez in about. Late December, yep. traded to the Miami Marlins. Huh? Doesn't he make money than their more money than their entire team? But let me, yeah, no, he yeah. does. But don't you think if the Yankees right now, if they would, if if if, if they agree to pay a certain amount of A. Rod's salary, I think they would like to unload him, wouldn't they? Yeah, yeah, I, I think they would, especially if they could get something back. And I'll try to get Miami. <laughs> they might Kyle Skipworth. I did mention uh, Matt Dominguez as part of the trade. You do need a young third baseman in uh, your future. It, there. it certainly makes Logan Morrison. We actually have a third baseman in our system, Brandon Laird. That's so you really see what I know? Is that really, 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 really worth getting excited that about? That doesn't sound like a good Is name. Matt Dominguez really worth getting excited about? Yeah. A little more than Brandon Laird, maybe. I don't know. Well, yeah, give me your thoughts, Buckman. You're the Yankee fan. What, what, what happened? You know what happened? Yeah. Typical Yankee October as of late. Typical? I well, mean, look at this guy. Two two years 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 ago. Ago. We had the World Series, series in 2009, all yeah. right? But... You know, we're not we're not a we're not an October team anymore. We don't have three pitchers. Not anymore. We don't have three pitchers. You were the LCS last year. You need pitching. We don't have pitching. We have CC and then the clowns. It's the clowns. <laughs> and you know who the ringleader of the clowns is? Joe Girardi. Joe Girardi, exactly. Are you putting wow. Joe, Are you putting Joe Girardi on the spot? No, I just I, I don't uh, I don't like how he's always so by the book today. Rain uh, brings out some anger. Speaking of clowns, you South Florida natives, what what are the Marlins doing in center field? What do you mean? This mess uh, that they're building, uh, the bright uh, fish that's going to no, light it's up. Gonna be I thought you meant like it's going to look awesome. I thought you yeah, meant like I Reggie will, Abercrombie will, was back. We have oh, very very. Well, do you know? I don't think you even know. We have very Reggie Abercrombie. <laughs> I'm going to just gloss over that right now. But <laughs> we have very different definitions have of you, awesome. Have you seen? The uh, the fish tanks that are going in behind the backstop. Have you gotten to uh, to look at that story not. yet? Yes, fish tank in the backstop. A fish tank. I mean, all seventeen people there will probably enjoy it very much. All right, come on now. We're we're gonna draw next year. Don't worry. I'm not gonna invite yeah, you. They're, to gonna, my, they're my gonna draw next like year. a couple blocks away, Andrew. Come on, be nice. I can invite you to my house. You can park outside to watch a Marlins game. You probably yeah. play the Red Sox at some point. Yeah, all right. Okay. No, yeah, go for that. There you go. There you go. <laughs> all right, so the Detroit beats uh, the Yankees. The Rays lose to Texas. I thought Texas bullpen was the difference. Texas bullpen might be the difference in general. Their bullpen with Ogando now in this just been tremendous. Uh, they beat, That's what's the difference last night against Detroit. I and thought, though. They hit Verlander. They, they hit Verlander. They did a great too. job I mean, with that lineup. That's why I picked Texas we're, to win to get to the World Series before they started. Uh, well, they were complaining. Everyone's complaining about Verlander only going four innings because of the rain delay. And. and it's a valid complaint, but it's not like he was pitching great. No, great. Actually, he hasn't pitched well. He hasn't pitched great the entire postseason. No, it doesn't. Uh, I think Texas beats Detroit. I think I picked before the playoffs Texas and Milwaukee, and I'm sticking to it. That was my pick. Uh, the Cardinals are absolutely on fire. What I think today we have with Jaime Garcia and Zach. Yes, Zach, sir. A pop my zone, boy. A pop zone, Zach Greinke. You never yeah. know. You never know what you're going to get from no. him. No, but I mean that's the key. If you're the Cardinals, I think you got to win this with pitching. You're not going to outslug Milwaukee. You don't. Have, in fact, I know the St. Louis fans aren't going to like this, but you don't even have the best player in this series. I'm sorry, Albert Pujols is not the best player in this series. Ryan Braun is the best player in this series. Ryan Braun is the NL MVP. Mm. I take mm. Ryan Braun easily over Albert Pujols. From the U. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm still going Albert Pujols if I need a big yeah, hit. It's... I'll take uh, Mr. Braun, and then uh, I think Milwaukee wins this series. They don't. I think they match up well with St. Louis. I think they'll hit St. Louis pitching. Carpenter, when is he going to go? Game two? Game three, maybe? Three, I believe. I think it's game three, yeah. Game three. Philadelphia, who everybody picked, over 102 wins. A great pitching staff out in the opening round. What do you what do you say? I mean, uh, my goodness. Shocked. I mean, you know, I, when I, going into that series against the Cardinals, and of course I, I'm a, I am a Cardinals fan. I, I, you know, I thought that they had really no shot against Philadelphia. I picked Philadelphia to the World Series. I can't believe that that pitching staff is out in the first round of a of a playoff series. It's just unbelievable to think that that you know when every year basically teams win with pitching, and then and then you've got the best pitching staff maybe assembled in the last. 
10 years, maybe since the 90s Braves, and you're bounced out in the first round like they you used to do. Out yeah. Right? yeah, all the time. Which makes you wonder, you can have all the great pitching you want, but if you don't hit, it doesn't matter, does it? you got to have at least a couple bats. Yeah, and Tampa Bay found that out as well against Texas in their series as well. So, uh, how do you, what, what does Philadelphia and New York go from here? Uh, open the checkbooks back up. So I mean, I, <laughs> well, what, what, they, else okay, do what do they do? What do they go? But what do they go after? Well, Philly clearly needs hitting. Yeah, uh, and New York clearly needs a starting pitcher. I mean, uh, they, as, as Buckman alluded to, the clown, I mean, yeah. he's not wrong about clown. that. I mean, they clearly need another starter. They've got to keep Sabathia if he opts out or, or whatever happens How about this? there. I got one for you. Name kind of off the radar. You Darvish to the Yankees. How do you like that? Do you even know who you Darvish is? Japanese who? Pitcher. Yes, I do. Japanese pitcher. Yeah. That's got a Robbo written. I'm not. A, I'm not about those. Since Dice, Dice K, K, yeah, and uh, you might be getting you Darvish. Japanese baseball is overrated. I'm sorry. Uh, you can hate on the Nippon League. That's not fun. Yeah, other Nichiro uh, and Matsui to some extent. Really, haven't had a lot of success there. Actually, I, I just saw a thing that the Rangers are expected to win right. the rights on yeah, you Darvish. They're going to win that when I heard read that. Let them. Well, that's uh, twenty million in the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> you got to pay $20 million just to bargain with the guy, then you're paying him $20 million a year. I mean, you have to pay 51.1. <laughs> million there. What do you like, uh, Andrew? Milwaukee, St. Louis, and L.A. Uh, I like, I, I, like, I love watch. what St. Louis is doing. Does he even I know just, what network it's Milwaukee's on? got a better team right yeah, now. Yeah, they do. And, uh, so I've got Milwaukee. Uh, they're pitching. How about I take Prince Fielder as well over Lance Berkman? Well, yeah, over Lance Berkman, Thank sure. You. Where does Prince Fielder oh, land next year? He's a Cardinal hater oh, this morning. It's terrible. No, I'm just being reality. Because you know why? Because Milwaukee, I think, is a better baseball town. They were tremendous oh, atmosphere. On. I think St. Louis is overrated. I think, nah, I think Eric's crazy. trying to get Carson nah, going here. But get me upset. the Brewer fans have been fantastic. I, I, yeah, the Brewer, weren't they all, all from year. that Arizona series? It was unbelievable. That, they're a small market yes. team. They're a team that has them good. That's what Tampa Bay should look like in the playoffs. Ooh. Are you, out? are you taking the shot on the Rays? I'm not necessarily Rays taking public. a shot because they didn't have bad crowds no. in the playoffs. They and didn't have, way, yeah, they didn't have awful o'clock. crowds to end the year. But yeah. the way the way how rowdy those fans were, I mean, I know it's a different atmosphere. St. Pete a lot more laid back. But the, the way that atmosphere was, that's how any team should look. No, I, actually, I will agree with you there. Yeah. I, I thought you were going to go with the point I'm not, the Rays. No, I'm not, I'm not creaming the Rays on a tennis. I thought you were going to say the Rays that. need to get a bat or two. How about a little Prince Well, Fielder, they do huh? need to get yeah, a bat or two. They need a bat. And I think they, if, we, if they trade Shields and Upton, which we think they will, they need to at least get some bats in return. Prince Fielder's not going to be one of no, them. No, he's not. <laughs> maybe maybe Prince goes to Philadelphia. They kick Ryan Howard to the curve. Or, huh? or maybe maybe uh, instead of all the Pujols to the Cubs talk, we get Prince Fielder there. A different division True. rival. That's true. It could happen. Uh, so what's your World Series? Uh, what's your prediction? Uh, I actually picked Milwaukee all year. I'll stick with them. I, had, uh, the bro- I, I either yeah. fell into the hype or I'm a homer. And, and I, had Bo- I had Boston Milwaukee at the beginning of the year. Uh, I'll go Texas now. I mean, I'll go Texas, and I mean, I really can't go against St. Louis ah, at this you point. You can't build I mean, on them. I, I can't, I can't I do it. I was the one that gave them a shot against Philadelphia. I St. Guess. Louis is, uh, I mean, they, got, they certainly have a lot of momentum. I mean, that upset, the way they ended the year... You couldn't ask for much more. I'm no. just not sure how much further they can go. Some people in Boston clamoring for Joe Mann to go to the Red Sox. You buying it? I'm not buying that it's going to happen, but it'd be. I'd love it. <laughs> what are God, the Red, be evil. <laughs> what are the Red so Sox? Terrible. What do the Red Sox do? What do they do to fix? Get back in this? Uh, well, first it's starting to look like they're going to lose their general manager. The uh, we'll, we'll see what they can get from Chicago if that indeed happens. Do you blame him though? Because well, what else are you going to do in Boston? He's kind of right. If, World he, if, he, if he goes and wins in Chicago, I mean. No, he's the god of baseball. He yeah, win with the, yeah, Cubs forever. With the Red Sox. Yeah, so it's enticing that way. There's going to be less pressure because I mean, let's, let's be serious. Chicago's been awful for forever now. You know, they're not expected to compete for the World yeah. Series every year like Boston is. So I, I could see him doing it, even though he's from Boston. I mean, less pressure. They're saying uh, his kids. He's got a newborn son that they think is going to start hearing about it because how ridiculous the media is there. So. Things like that could could make it happen. Uh, we'll see what kind of compensation Boston gets. He's got a year on his contract, so he would get something. Um, to put that in perspective, when Theo Epstein left the first time, they were going to get Billy Bean. Kevin Euclid was the one going over to Oakland. I mean, that's a wasn't wow. a household name that he is now. Right. But that's still a pretty big move. Uh, so you'd see what kind of compensation Boston would get. Uh, you know, as a Red Sox fan, instead of an, an analyst, uh, can they you know take Theo if you'll take John Lackey with him? <laughs> Throw him as a package deal, huh? <laughs> uh, Andrew, that's good stuff. Quick note, 
Game three, Yankees Tigers, right? CC Sabathia versus Justin Verlander did a 4.7 uh, rating. The Bucks and the Colts with Curtis Painter, not Peyton Manning, Curtis Painter, the great Curtis Painter, did an eight and a half rating. Wow. Football. Double, almost doubling. Double. I mean, and we got a what? chance, you know, you might see Peyton Manning in the booth. But what does that say? <laughs> well, that does draw ratings. <laughs> What does that say when a, quite frankly, a pretty mediocre, irrelevant NFL football game destroys a marquee baseball game with arguably two of your biggest stars in the in the mound? That well, says bad things for baseball, that's and, for sure. And fantastic things for football, which we already knew. Uh, but I, I have the dual TV set up, and I, I'm not going to lie, I have the football game on the bigger TV. So It's, it's football. Monday night. Takes priority for me. Monday night, game two, Cardinals-Brewers going head-to-head against the Bears and the Lions. Who wins? Uh, you're talking about the Bears, a team, a team that always draws ratings. The yeah, Lions, who are the talk of the league. Yeah, everyone wants to watch them. Some people haven't gotten a chance to see the Lions yet. This is a really good opportunity for them to do so. I, I think it'll it'll do even possibly better than what yeah, last Monday did. I think it's going to be a bigger difference this double time. Double it? Do they easily double it? I think they'll double it, yeah. Wow. Fixable? Can baseball do anything to fix this, or is this pretty much uh, the train has left the, the I, road? I don't even know if it's completely negative with baseball. I think it's just that positive and how much but the country loves this, football. I mean, Detroit Yankees, Sabathia, and Verlander. The Yankees is your marquee franchise, market, you know, New York. And you lose to a media. I mean, I can understand it was a big end at Monday night game. It was the Bucks and the Colts. It wasn't a marquee game. It was Curtis Painter. It was a pretty good game, though. Yeah, it was. But no one knew that coming yeah, in. No yeah, one, no one really Buck, nationally. Buck, you got thoughts on this? I uh, didn't even watch the Yankee game that night. And you're a Yankee And I'm fan. a Yankee fan. Wow. I had more vested with LeGarrette Blunt getting me yards and points of fantasy. Go. I could care less. You know what? Baseball ended when the lockout ended. And 1993. That's, that's a lot of people, I think, feel that way. I think that's a fair assessment. Uh, I also think... And I think you and I, Carson, have talked about it. I'm, yeah. a, big, I'm a bigger fan of uh, post-strike baseball. They need the new TV. D- <laughs> yeah, obviously uh. it would be the new TV deal, which ends in 2013, I believe. Yeah. They need to get away from Fox and TBS, don't they? Isn't Absolutely. That? Just- I don't like. I don't like either network. I don't like what they've done with the coverage. I don't like the way that they try to showcase the sport. Uh, Clearly, I, I think I don't know what, where they should go or what they should do, but I, I don't like uh, the two. I don't like the broadcasts, and I don't really like the way the the product, the sport, is packaged on either of those networks. No, it isn't. I think you go back to NBC and uh, ESPN, and uh, I think you'll get a little more pub there. And but they got to do a better job with their marketing their stars. Uh, yes, yeah, right that's, now that's it's, the key. Uh, it's a faceless sport. No one knows anybody who's in the in these games, and we have fantastic players. I mean, everyone knows Albert Pujols. You know Justin Verlander now from the season he's had. But, yeah, you know, we don't know a lot of these I'm Texas not even guys. sure Albert Pujols is a household name. I, think I don't he, think he's a ratings draw. I don't think he's a ratings draw. I don't think people are going to – I don't think he's Barry Bonds that people no, would stop no. to go watch oh, him. No, no, not even no. No, I think he's a household name. But a big ratings draw? I probably agree with you there. He's not. No. Not good times there. But uh, we will have the games, the playoffs here on ESPN Radio. We do encourage you to listen to it. Some good broadcasts. Dan Shulman will be in there. John Shomby. Radio broadcast probably well, better than the TV broadcast. I really do think yeah, that's, that's the case. Yeah, that's accurate. That's – Start, although Terry Francona in the booth. We'll see how it goes. Speaking of that popular NFL, that's coming up next. Buckman, we're going to make six picks in the NFL. Roulette, a new segment. Stay tuned. We're going to break it down. Is the NFL coming up here on ESPN 1080 in Orlando. It's the leaderboard, Monday, 6 to 8 on ESPN 1080 WHOO. This is where the pros come to talk. Hi, this is Boo Weekly. Hi, this is Jim Furyk. Hi, this is Rocco Mediate. Hi, this is Trevor Emmelman. Hi, this is Zach Johnson. Hi, this is Woody Austin. Where the pros come to talk about their game, live from Celebration Town Tavern. Hi, this is Corey Pavin, a 2010 Ryder Cup captain. Listen to the leaderboard, Monday evening, 6 to 8 p.m., right here on ESPN. I'm in the I need cordless cutting shears to finish this vent work business. At Granger, we know what business you're in. I'm in the if you can help my business, then you'll get my business business. The business of getting things done. That's why we offer over 900,000 products and the support you need to get your job done right and on time. Call, click Granger.com or stop by one of our branches. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Here and sit down on the porch with me. I love staying here. How long have you lived here? A long time. You know, your mother grew up here. I'm 
going to have a house like this when I grow up. I hope so, buddy. I hope so. For the first time in generations, the dream of home ownership is being threatened. Realtors, members of the National Association of Realtors, are here to represent you and protect home ownership. Visit houselogic.com slash home ownership to learn more. ESPN 1080.com Insider Show here on ESPN 1080 Orlando. Eric Lopez alongside Andrew Melnick, who is breaking down the Red Sox roster. He's trying to work a deal with the Cubs to get John Lackey out of here. In yeah, Boston, right? Starlin Castro, please. <laughs> Carson Engel joining us, who is trying to get an exclusive interview with the Bush Squirrel, the MVP of the NLDS. I uh, I am in talks with his people. That's Got all a lot I can of Twitter say. followers, that Squirrel. You know who also has a lot of followers? Mr. David Buckman, our producer. That's actually false. Yeah. I don't have. I have no followers. You don't have. <laughs> no, he does. You got Victor Anderson. He's just. He's just being there. modest. He is being modest, but he he's excited because he's got a segment now. Oh yeah. We're gonna debut. Explain to the audience what we're gonna do now with the NFL. All right. Here's here's the deal. We're gonna go around the league. We got six games to pick from. I I pick them because I mean I'm the producer, so I get to say what happens. I'm gonna pick six games a week. And we're going to go around, and uh, it's between you three. And the loser, as long as it... The one with the worst record of the, the three of us. Yeah, at, at the end of the week, the one who doesn't guess right, doesn't get to guess next week. You have to sit on the side. You're sitting out the segment next yeah, week. you sit out the segment next week, and you can join the, the following week when the next person... Take a week off. ...does terrible. Out of these segments. And at the end of uh, you know the NFL season, we'll see who can accumulate the most wins. Me. Which will... Maybe. Melnick guaranteeing victory. Are we doing Breaking this news. Spread? Melnick says he's going to win. Wow. So, all right, go ahead. If, if my recent betting line's any indication, I am not going to win. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's start off with uh, my team, New York Giants. Yeah. Minus nine and a half points. Mm -hmm. They are in Seattle. Minus nine and a half points. Is the game in Seattle? The game is in Seattle. Really? Sleepless in Seattle. Well, I'm playing the Giants' defense in Fantasy League, so I hope they cover the spread and dominate Tavares Jackson. So I'm going to go with the Giants. So uh, we're going to go G-Men for, for Lopez. Uh, I'm going to go Giants, too. Actually, I believe the game is in New York. Thank uh, you. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go, go Giants. Those cross-country trips are terrible. Yeah, no, the Giants will, I think, uh, have a pretty big day there at home against the Seahawks. How about uh, we, we start this one with Engel. Uh, San Fran, they're hosting the Buccaneers. San Fran favored by three. Nah, I got Tampa in that. I don't think San Francisco's much. Some people like them, think they're pretty good. I know going out west, that's a tough. We just talked about the cross country, but I'll, I'll take the Bucks today. I'd probably call it a push, uh, but you know, I'll take San Francisco. I'll say they cover. I I just don't like those West Coast trips, and you gotta like what the Forty ers have been doing. The Bucks kind of stale on offense sometimes. Oftentimes, I'm gonna go San Francisco. Spread is what Niners by three. Niners by three. Vegas knows something that we don't. I'm going to go with Brian Winnegar's Niners since we hung out with Brian, and uh, you know I have to deal with Brian all week, and I, I know he's going to laugh at me if I don't pick the Niners. Patrick Willis, I think, stops uh, LeGarrette Blunt. Jim That's Harbaugh, baby, on his way to Coach of the Year and winning the NFC West. I'm going to go Niners. A all game right. you can hear, by the way, right here on ESPN 1080 at 4 o'clock. You're home of the Tampa Bay Bucks. Great little promo Thank there. You. Great, great. Uh, Indy, minus two, hosting Kansas City. The toilet bowl. Mm. Oh, I gotta pick this one. Uh, where's this game at Indy? It's, uh, I'm gonna say the Colts get off the Schneid. Curtis Painter outduels Matt Castle in a classic. I go Colts. I actually like the Colts too. They played the Bucks pretty tough yeah. last week. Curtis Painter didn't play that bad. I think Pierre Garcon can maybe break another play or two. Uh, the Chiefs are awful. I mean, that's not saying anything for the Colts. Uh, maybe Peyton Manning on the sideline inspires them to a, to a three point victory. Oh, he's out of yeah. the. He's out of the. I think he's now? been cleared to go on to the sideline. I wonder if he's gonna wear like a neck brace. Oh, you're breaking down Peyton Manning's every move. It's beautiful. <laughs> what else do you have to do when you talk about Indianapolis? That's true. And when basketball's locked out. Yeah, the Colts. Uh, I, I'll go with the Colts too. I, I think that they're finally starting to learn at least how to make it through playing without Peyton Manning. Not to say it's gonna be pretty, but they they kind of figured it out a little bit. Yeah. And some guys have stepped up there, so Defense I'll go is playing Colts. better. Yeah. Well, uh, next next round is uh, Philly, minus three, at Buffalo. Ooh. Must win for the Eagles. The Dream Team, one and three. Michael Vick uh, reverting back to his old self, which is not a great quarterback, and overrated. 
So, but Buffalo has no defense. Buffalo comes back to earth. I think Philly wins this game. I think Philly kind of comes back here, and I think they win it fairly easy. I think they certainly cover this line. The Bills, a bit of a fraud. I mean, we saw them lose to Cincinnati after getting their biggest win in, I don't know, literally like 10 years against New England the week before. I think they come back to earth, and I think that the dream team gets a, gets a win today. Yeah, like you said, uh, Eric, uh, Philly needs this win. That that means that they win this game. I think that they're just that, that they have no other choice but to win. If they go to one and four, I mean, it's going to be absolute pandemonium in Philadelphia. You're going to be talking about firing Andy Reid. Uh, so I'll go with Philadelphia. All right, this one starts with Melnick. You know what the game, Melnick? New New England minus seven and a half. Hosting the J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. New England's going to win the game, 7.5, actually down from 9 earlier in the week. That's just a, a, too many points for me against a defense like the Jets. So I say New England wins the game, Jets cover. New England blows them out. Tom Brady wow, takes out a lot look of at this frustrations. Guy. Here comes Dolphins. Mark Here he Zane. comes. No, no, I hate both teams. I don't really know really anything matter, but I think Brady, the Jets' defense is not as good as last year. Charlie mentioned this in our pregame. Their front four is soft. That's I think, true. I think New England can actually run the ball a little bit in there, but I think Brady torches him. Mark Sanchez is a terrible quarterback. I think New England's defense, even though it's not very good, will rise to the occasion they win the cover spread. Yeah, I think New England is probably going to win this game, but I'll, I'll go with the Jets covering like uh, Andrew did. So Andrew and Carson taking Jets. I like Lopez that. going New England. Yeah! Finally, we have a little... Uh, Aaron Hernandez, parody. baby. Yeah, there's something different here, but last game, number six, Houston, minus five. And they are hosting Oakland, who obviously will be playing with uh, heavy hearts. I'm going to say Oakland might have a shot to steal this game. No Andre Johnson in this game for the Texans. That's going to hurt Matt Schaub a little bit. And my fantasy team. And your Andrew Melnick's fantasy league team. But uh, I'm, I think Oakland, defense with a Richard Seymour, I think they cover the spread at least, might even steal this game. But I'm going to go with Oakland here, Al Davis in honor of Al Davis. I like what Oakland's doing. I don't know how you can. They beat the Jets. were competitive all last week with New England. But I love what Houston's doing. I think Houston gets it done. Arian Foster looked great in his return. I think they run the ball, get it done, win by 7 to 10 points. I'll take Houston to cover. Yeah, I like, I like Oakland. I think Oakland will win the game. Denarius Moore, my boy, big game. Love that guy out there. He's starting to really blossom as a rookie. And, of course, they have to win for Al Davis. Well, that wraps it up, guys. Too bad we don't have any intro, outro music here because the wow. uh, the great computer doesn't have internet today. It's malfunctioning in the rain, the, the computer there. So the yeah. NFL uh, so. getting going another week of the NFL. Anything that jumps out? Otherwise, headlines we didn't cover there, the guys. Uh, I, I want to get your guys right before we leave. Uh, Pittsburgh hosting Tennessee. Ben Roethlisberger looks like a play. Mendehall game time decision. Tennessee. Remember, I picked them to win that division. Matt Hasselbeck three one playing very well, but Pick- I think. Even you couldn't have called Matt Hasselbeck's success so far, though. No, no, and Chris Johnson hasn't been that great, but I'm going to go with Pittsburgh. I think they bounce back. They win this game. Uh, I think they're one of those. I think, you know what they are? I think they're like the Boston Celtics of the NBA. I think they're just going to coast through the regular season yeah. and try to be savage for the playoffs. They're, they're, little, they're not careful. They're going to coast a little too much. They're a little <laughs> older like the Celtics, yeah. too. And they're going to rest guys. They're going to, guys aren't going to play at full speed, I don't think, until the playoffs, and then they'll come in there and, and we'll see what happens. I mean, they could kind of have a, uh, you know, a little bit of a layover effect from the season if they continue to sort of play up and down like this, but uh, I do think that they win today and they beat the Titans. Well, I think the the funny thing is you've been able to run on the Steelers. You'd usually think that bodes well for no. the Titans, but like you said, the Titans haven't been able to run the ball at all. No. So I, I I like Pittsburgh here as well, especially being at home. So should be a good NFL week. Uh, of course, Sunday night football, Green Bay and Atlanta. Revenge, revenge. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers playing in a different role for the undefeated Packers, best team in the NFL. Uh, it's tough to argue, although the defense's been shaky, a little shaky, but that offense is tough to stop. It's Two best that. teams in the league might be in the same division. Green Bay and what, Detroit? Yeah. Do we think Detroit beats the Bears? Yes. Prime time, Matthew yep. Stafford? Certainly do. How happy are you that the Dolphins aren't playing today? Very good. I don't have to worry that's about very a loss. Alleviating, uh, right? Yeah, it's, it's a very good. relieving and uh, hey, you know. It's relaxing. Watch everyone else play. Absolutely. Watch everybody and, play. Watch some good For football. you Dolphins fans, New England or the Jets, one of them's going to lose. That's the good news. That's how I look at it. That's a good point. <laughs> That's good. Did you watch any of the Wade versus LeBron game last night? No, uh, I didn't. Condition? I actually wanted to catch it with the uh, with the fights going on. I was watching UFC and and football. Didn't get to saw some of the highlights. Uh, saw Chris Paul make the trip down after being at the Wake Forest Florida State game. It's a heck of a doubleheader. Yeah, it really is. 
<laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's a good trip there down South Beach. LeBron gets a standing ovation. Rajon Rondo gets booed out of the arena. Hmm, no surprise there. Capacity crowd of 4,000 at FIU, of course. Know that arena pretty well. It's beautiful times. Hopefully they uh, get to play in bigger, bigger arenas soon. Which I think yeah, they, this, you, I mean, these games are featuring kind of better players, though. That's true. They don't, mean, they don't hearing, mean anything, but they're entertaining. I've been hearing two weeks from some NBA folks. Two weeks of deal. Well, November sixteenth is a pivotal date because that's when players start lose, missing checks. So I think by no later than that period of time, you'll see a deal struck. Uh, I and remember, if they, even if they cancel the first couple of weeks of the regular season tomorrow, which is expected. They could always make that up later in the year in the NBA, maybe play a few more extra back-to-backs. That's what I've wondered. Well, what's, what's the problem with extending the season a couple weeks? Nothing. That's fine. We, we haven't really heard talk about that. It's just missing games. If you miss two weeks, why not tag two yeah, weeks Yeah, what's on? the difference June and July? Exactly. And obviously, if you're Orlando, you're obviously more invested in it because it affects whether you have the All-Star weekend yeah, or not. That's you, very pivotal because you were not City getting it. City needs the money they're going to make it's a that one, All-Star game. It's a one-pro sports team town, so that makes it very difficult. Other cities... Man, they might not care as much, but, I mean, people are itching. I was even getting my hair cut this week and wanted to talk about the lockout. That's what they want to talk about, the haircut. Yeah, I think people are, they're yeah, trying to build a little mini city around the arena now, yeah. trying, to, trying to be like other teams. Got to have a team playing for that stuff to get done, and I know we all want that to get done. We need something else to do after the games. I sure. think I mean, we miss the where Dwight Howard stay in Orlando talk. We miss it, don't we? No, I don't no, miss that. No, that's one thing I don't miss. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do. I miss it. It'll be fun to uh, re- reconvene that. So I, do I, don't, think, I yeah. don't think I like the answer is why I don't miss it. That's a good point. Check out all the content on ESPN1080.com all week long. We'll cover the UCF SMU football game. We'll have round three podcasts. We've got a whole bunch of other stuff, good podcasts and everything. Check out Beat of Sports, Tuck and O'Neill all week long. So, for Andrew Melnick, Carson Ingle for Buckman, and Victor Anderson down in the booth there, I'm Eric Lopez. It's been another edition of ESPN1080.com Insider Show on ESPN1080, the team here in Orlando. Yeah, he seems a little angry, but that's why.